بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Now, SSH is a better protocol for the remote access compared to telnet like in the previous sections we discussed about the drawbacks of the telnet where the connection is in a clear text now you may want to manage the devices remotely but you you also want to make sure that it should be secure so it's as i said uses some some encryption algorithms which make sure that your entire session is actually encrypted and it's a secure way of accessing the remote devices so the communication between the client and the server the client means nothing but the user who is trying to access the remote device it will be encrypted which which uses any any one of the versions like version 1 or version 2 so the version 2 uses more uh, enhanced algorithms compared to version 1 now the ssl SSH, ssh connections performs a three way handshake process so initially whenever you use a ssh client software like here i'll be using a putty or maybe some secure crt uh, client applications and i'm going to initiate a connection to the router which is going to act as my ssh server and we just go and type in the ip address let's say whatever the ip address 1.2.3.4 so it's going to build a secure tunnel between these two between these two devices so this secure tunnel is actually a method of negotiating the algorithms used between these two devices like what is the encryption and the hashing algorithms used so in in simple words we can say rsa key pairs which which are going to be used for encrypting the session and once the secure tunnel is negotiated then the user is going to enter the credentials like username and the password which is exchanged through that uh, to the tunnel and then this server is going to authenticate based on this username and the passwords and once the authentication is successful then the actual a transmission of your commands or whatever used for the management traffic will be will be done so the entire session is actually encrypted and it's it's done by uh, initially it's going to negotiate the tunnel and then after successful authentication your 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 data is transferred nothing but your management traffic is transferred now if you want to make sure that your ssh server should work you need to do some basic configurations like here let's say in my router i want to make sure that this router should be allowed to to be accessed remotely via ssh now we need to enable some uh, we need to add some configurations on the router like we need to generate some key pairs which which is going to be used for encrypting your sessions and of course we need to also configure the username and the password which will be used for authenticating the users and you cannot use only password it has to be username and the passwords either using the local database or some remote servers so and then we need to query to the video line and the protocol should be allowed and optionally we can configure some other parameters like changing the version to version 2 or how many maximum sessions are allowed in general we can also configure that so if we, if i go with a basic configuration wise so we'll be creating one local user account and this user account will be used for authentication so of course as i said we can also use some external servers using triple a concepts we'll we'll see that external servers more in detail in the in the triple a concepts and the next thing is we need to configure the domain name now the domain name anything you can configure but the domain name is a mandatory for the rsa key pairs Uh, to be to be generated because when when we use some rsa keys when we generate rsa keys in the next command it's going to uh create this rsa keys rsa keys actually composed with the host name of the device whatever the host name and with the domain name like let's say if i'm giving the host if, if my host name is r1 and nya.com let's say so so based on that it will generate the keys so the domain name configuration is is mandatory if you are if you are using this configurations and then you you need to tell the size uh, the ip size of the keys the higher the number the more more secure so we can we can go up to whatever the number it depends upon the ios versions and these two commands are like 
mandatory configurations we need to add for SSH to work. We need to create the RSA key pairs and for that we need a domain name has to be configured. And then this SSH connections comes on the VDL line. Probably this VDL line must be enabled with login local option because we will be using a local username and the password will be using for verifying. Probably that's what login local option, same like your telnet. And by default on the VTVL line, this SSH connections are not allowed. So we need to manually say transport input SSH. So I can remove this telnet. If I remove the telnet, it will only allow the SSH connections, which means if a user is trying to access the device remotely via telnet, telnet is not allowed by default on the VTVL line because we, we remove this option. So by default, VTV line allows telnet, not SSH. But here we are enabling the SSH and we are disabling the telnet options. So let's go to the command line and let's do the configuration here. So I got my devices pre-configured with the basic IP addressing as per my previous topology. So if I go to router 1 and verify the configurations here, like show IP interface brief. So let me see on the router 1 first. And if I try to ping to my router 2, I'm able to ping as well as I should be able to ping to my PC here, 10.1.1.10. So, so let me see there is a problem here, might be my Windows firewall is uh, enabled, so I'll try to disable that firewall. And then I'm going to generate the RSA keys, crypto key RSA, crypto key generate RSA. And then I can simply press enter here to automatically select the keys, number of uh, the, the size of the key modules. Uh, generally, it's preferable to go anything above 1000. So you can go up to 4096 range, the higher the number, the more secure and it's going to generate the keys and then finally we need to go to the vt1 line and we need to set transport input only ssh i'm not enabling the telnet and i think login local is already configured but login local option at the end now to test this we can either do from the router so in my case i'm trying to ssh from the router to even I'll, I'll do the testing from the router from the PC as well. So from the router to router, we can we can do this way like SSH hyphen user uh, username is admin, and then the IP address of that particular device. So hyphen L, there should not be space here. So the password is envoy one two three, and you can see I'm able to log into my uh, to my router one via SSH. And likewise, I can use some putty application to manage my router. So from the PC, I'm, I'm trying to use port number 22 via SSH. So just click OK. This is just a, a certificate, the, the encryption. It's going to say the server hotkey is not cached in the registry. Just click S and then the admin and the password is in where to click. So if I say show users, you can see on the router 1, we have two SSH connections coming from VTY line 0 and 1 from the two different devices. So basically, it's always preferable to use SSH as uh, mainly for the remote access. And the IWS routers or the switches must be configured with these specific commands to make sure that you can, you can access the device via SSH.